Casey Gaines from Groupon. Nice to meet you guys. And I'm Joey Healy from Cisco. All right, awesome. So we're talking about social engagement, and you guys are coming from very different companies. Uh, and Casey, you joined Groupon not too long ago, and whenever you joined, you guys sort of overhauled your entire content strategy, right? Yeah, so I joined about nine months ago, and when I before I joined, um, the content strategy was basically an RSS feed of our current deals, mm -hmm. which isn't really the most engaging content. Right. Really not having people want to share that content, not really engaging with them. Mm -hmm. um, so what we are do in the process of right now is actually overhauling the entire content strategy across all of our platforms, really creating that content that inspires, um, creates some kind of emotional um, engagement with them, um, as well as potentially um, some kind of education, really um, educating people what our deals are all about, because mm -hmm. we have really interesting local deals, whether it's um, a V-Steam, which some, I don't know how many people in the room know what that is, um, Google it. Yeah, it's on you're going to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, or just different kinds of massages. There's a float tank um, in Chicago that's available where you can actually go inside a tank that has a lot of salt water and you can actually float inside of it and it's extremely relaxing, great for your skin, great for depression, just overall a great experience. And a lot of people don't know what these are and so we want to really educate and inspire people to take advantage of what's out there in their city. So a lot of times you just know what's next door. You just constantly go to that same masseuse, you go to that same restaurant down the street, but there's so much to take advantage of. And so really it's about educating and inspiring people to sort of not have FOMO anymore <laughs> and go out there and really inspire to sort of take advantage of everything. And that's sort of the approach nowadays. Yeah, that great. Gonna, and so how's that going so far for you guys? So far so good. Mm -hmm. So it's a really um, a learning experience. Um, we sort of are testing in the waters and take, trying new content. The humor is the hardest part is because you can assume what would make people laugh, but you never know. I mean, humor is one of the hardest things to grasp. Absolutely. Um, but at the core, our brand is very quirky. Mm -hmm. And so we're definitely going to stick with that. And so it's trying to really identify what kind of humor works. Mm -hmm. um, the Banana Bunker, I don't know how many people have seen that um, back in April. Great. If you guys don't know what the Banana Bunker is, definitely Google it right now for a laugh. <laughs> OK? Um, it's definitely entertaining. Um, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Did you Google it? Is she already on it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. I, okay, so basically, if you can't Google it, it is protective gear for your banana. Um, so it's Tupperware for your banana because you know how if you it ever take bruised. bananas to work, it gets bruised. And that's mm -hmm. not the best banana experience. And so this is Tupperware that we provide um, at Groupon that you can buy. And well, we posted it and. Um, you know, some people took it a different way. And so, <laughs> ah, I mean, we did not take it that way by any means. Um, so people would post things on social and we were like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't know, we're just protecting your banana. It's safety first. You gotta be, like, you don't wanna, you gotta be protected. I don't know, I can say a lot of things, but <laughs> we're recording this, so I'm gonna protect my humor right now. But, um, so yeah, so we had a great social care team that responded to all of that, playing into that humor. Great observational humor, woody humor, and things like that. So that's the humor that we know works, mm -hmm. and we're playing into that with other content that we have. Um, but definitely read the comments. It's quite entertaining. Um, <laughs> that's sort of our goal moving forward is seeing how we can bring that to life and other things. Great. Awesome. And so, Joey, you guys are, you're not as quirky as a company no. like Groupon, <laughs> but I think what's important for you guys is that even though you come from a very large company, your social media team is very intimate and focused on sort of transparency and providing that you know, look under the, under the hood for a company like Cisco. Exactly, so humor is extremely hard at Cisco. <laughs> um, B2B, you know, we're talking a lot about you know, technology, what we're enabling and things like that. So a lot of our stories are gonna really touch on what the technology does for you as a, as a person. So we have done some things, some, you know, tried some different humorous things. We actually just did a Vine campaign. Um, Vine is a really tough um, platform for us but we wanted to see what we could do in six seconds. Like, could we break down our technology in six seconds? And it was a great practice for our team because we worked with these influencers that were doing like claymation and animations to tell our innovation story, security, um, data and analytics. So it was a really good practice for us because then we were having to talk to them and break it down for them so that they could do this in six seconds for us. So um, it did really well for us, you know, mm -hmm. as a company. Um, but however, we shared on all, our, all of our platforms, and I think it did better on Instagram than it actually did on Vine, um, just because of our audience there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, more people looking at Instagram in general. Exactly. And you guys did that in-house, correct? We did. Well, so we do have um, our core team. Um, I've come from a news background, so mm -hmm. I was I worked at NBC for 15 years. Um, so storytelling is in my blood. 
And then my colleague, um, Kirsten, who's actually here with me today as well, she also comes from news. So a lot of the stories that we are telling, we're producing on our own. We have a video videographer on our team, a graphics artist, and then another writer who came from um, ReadWrite. So we are doing a lot of our storytelling on our own. Um, but then as far as the uh, Vine campaign went, we did work with influencers that were actually creating the content, mm -hmm. um, but the storylines we worked on uh, ourselves. Great. And yeah. so on Vine, that's obviously a tricky platform for yeah. anyone, can, let, let alone a brand like Cisco, but it sort of all dwindles down to simplification. So where else are you guys going for that route on Vine or in video in general? Sure. So um, I think Instagram is actually doing really well for us right now as far as simplifying the stories. Um, obviously 15 seconds and then the other thing we're actually um, working on too is really using it more as like a longer form platform so I just read an article saying like you know Instagram's the new blog platform where people are telling like these longer stories it's not just a quick sentence it's actually like a longer paragraph that will describe you know what that story is about and then you can click in the bio and get more information etc mm -hmm. um, so we are doing a lot there and then a lot more on our um, real-time engagement so taking advantage of those different days that are like you know networking day, you know, hashtag whatever, like Halloween we did something. So just trying to incorporate um, different ideas there and being a little bit more creative. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of engagement and interaction with different, not just influencers and media, but actually, you know, fans and telling that culture story a little bit better so that people that want to work for Cisco, you know, it's helping us with a lot of recruiting and things like that too, so. Yeah, that's a great usage. Yeah. And um, Casey, I know you guys, um, really interact with your fans on Twitter and, and it's become a conversation. So how has that worked out? Because, you know, the more you post on Twitter, the, you know, it can get trickier and you want to really monitor yourself, but you also want to entertain your fans. So how do you sort of balance that line? Yeah, so social care is our priority right now. And so majority of the volume that we do handle is still social care, just from a bandwidth standpoint. Um, so, but we look for those moments to really engage, um, to create that, that those great brand um, advocates and that great brand moment, whether it's the banana bunker or uh, the man bun that happened a couple of weeks ago that's all over GQ. Yeah, um, the so clip in man bun. If anyone like, yeah. wants to sport it for a week, it's available on Groupon. I think it's actually only available on Groupon, so check it out. I mean, you can surprise your spouse with like, a new hairdo and see if she's going to go for it or not. But give it a try. Um, so like those kinds of moments. So we really just listen to the community and see what's happening. And if it's really, I mean, because resources are tight right now, just specifically on the social care team, that it's a matter of like, if this is really fueling conversation, then we're going to jump into it and really move our team over into that direction. And we really just um, create that banter with them. Um, we always respond in that witty personality. Like we, that is who we are at our core. Our team is actually made up of a lot of um, comedy writers. That's great. That's um, awesome. So it's the same team, the social care team, that responds to this. And mm -hmm. so, um, if someone had a negative issue, but then at the end, it was resolved and they're they had a positive um, attitude about it, we will then respond with um, funny quotes, um, a funny video, or something mm -hmm. like the Rick Roll, whatever it may be. Um, and so we just really want to create that. Um, brand persona and that, that funny reaction that we have with um, consumers so they know that um, they can come back and have a good time. It's not like, yes, you had a customer service issue, but we're here and we're going to make you happy and we're going to find funny products for you if, if need be. Right. So like it's that. definitely about not taking yourselves too seriously. Exactly. Yeah. And do you guys find that that's harder for you it coming is. from a brand like Cisco? Sometimes it is and sometimes times it isn't. And, and one of the things that we're also working on right now is um, having our execs posting more. So. If we see something, you know, somebody's asking about, you know, whatever it is, a technology or something like that, we can flag it for some of our execs. And our CEO is on Twitter, so, you know, I'll say, hey, Chuck, like, this might be good for you to respond to, et cetera. So just taking advantage of those real-time opportunities to engage with people, I think, is super key right now, especially when there's so much noise out there. So when you're paying attention to those individuals, they're like, oh, wow, like, you did see that, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it definitely, I think, just builds not just your fan base, but also, you know, your customer base, et cetera. So. And how much back and forth do you do with your fans on social media? Um, it depends on what the questions are. A lot of times it'll be asking questions about, you know, I, I want to take this certification class or something like that, like for folks that want to work there. So then we can just flag it and send it to like a different team. Um, but, you know, we do do some, you know, a lot of engagement, especially more, more so with our influencers mm -hmm. to point out, you know, different stories or things that we know that they might want to write about or even just our media that are following us. Um, and that's extremely helpful for us. 
Right, so yeah, so tell me more about how you guys work with influencers. Sure, so um, I mentioned the Vine campaign, so that was, that was one way, but that was more of you know, influencers that have a big following on Vine because we knew that they were creating a lot of content there and then could share it on their own platforms. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to you know, a, like a security story or something that we're telling, and that's like a big push for us right now, or you know, Internet of Things, um, we'll definitely reach out to different influencers or folks that are sharing more of that content on their own handles and just say you know, either, hey, check this out, or hey, we put you as um, someone to follow in, as a subject matter expert in this area on our story. Check it out. And then we're, they're like, oh, thanks. You know, and then they'll tweet it and share it to their, fan, you know, to their followers. So um, we've gotten a lot of engagement that way. And then just, you know, then they'll come to us or, or really look at what we're producing and what we're doing more of, and then on their own continue to share that content. So Great. So we're talking about social engagement, but how do you guys measure what's working and what's not on social media platforms? I know you guys are sort of in the midst of mm -hmm. trying new things, trying different things on old platforms. So how do you know what's working and what's not? Yes, yeah, so we look at it in two different ways. We look at the soft metrics first, so the engagement metrics, to know if it's working from a com community standpoint. Mm -hmm. Because if the content isn't resonating with your community, it's not going to work from the hard metrics, the conversion metrics. We're an e-commerce site, so if it's not driving results from a purchase standpoint, it's not going to help us in the long run. But we first look at those soft metrics, the, the shares, the comments, the likes, the things like that. The shares are what's really important to us because we are looking for new customers and we're looking for um, that strong, shareable content that's really um, having that emotional impact. And the stronger the content, the more likely that someone's going to share it. Um, so that's the metrics that we look at first and foremost. Um, we look at certain engagement rates overall and things like that. And we do look at it on a constant basis. So about every um, Every week we take a look at our content just to see what's working, but every month we also re-examine uh, re re our content strategy and actually see um, what out of the mix. We have uh, three content pillars per content or per, per platform, and we look to see what should be removed from our content pillar or what should be removed from the mix altogether to see if we're on the right path. So we're constantly re reiterating and making sure that we have the right mix in our editorial calendars to make sure that we're um, engaging with our communities to the right extent. Um, and then once we identify that and have the soft, soft metrics in place, we're also looking at the conversion metrics too to make sure that, yes, are we engaging with our community correctly, but are we also engaging them to the point that they want to purchase? So whether it's, it's a direct purchase that day or it's a 30-day view-through conversion or whatever it is um, from the pixels that we have in place. Great. And how about you guys? You know, it's, I'm sure conversion isn't really the final goal for <laughs> <Right>. social media. <laughs> yeah, so I would agree with the, um, the shares. They're definitely big for us. Um, you know, not just on social, but then also from our, our newsroom site. So we also work with journalists um, all over the world, really. We have uh, some, obviously, in the U.S., in Spain, um, London, India. And so they're pitching stories to us and doing more of a brand journalism approach. So. The idea there is we want our media to see that as really a great new, you know, news story coming from this tech journalist that used to work at you know, Wall Street Journal or New York Times or something like that. So when they share that content, then that's sharing Cisco's voice even further. So we definitely look at the shares as well um, across our social platforms and our website. And then on top of that, look at on a monthly basis, you know, what is working? You know, did we put paid behind this post? Mm -hmm. Did it work organically instead? Um, taking a look at you know those those funnier pieces of content have done really well for us. So really looking at okay, how can we incorporate that incorporate that more into you know what we're doing in our strategy. Yeah, so for you, oh, one thing oh, to ahead. add, we've actually found that the funnier the piece of the content actually drives more conversion than a, a typical DR ad, mm -hmm. which is actually really telling, I think, from where we've come over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so for you guys, would you say it's about building brand affinity and brand awareness? Absolutely. So. Um, my team sits in under corporate communications, and so we manage all of our corporate handles. Um, there's also a larger marketing team that is really focused more on our on our customer. But what we're, the stories that we're telling on the corporate side are definitely more, you know, about our brand, our voice, you know, what we're working on, just pushing out those different messages, um, and making sure that, you know, for example, we even share on earnings. We do live tweets during earnings because mm -hmm. we want to make sure that, you know, our journalists are pulling out those pieces that we think are extremely important too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so transparency is obviously a big, a big point yes. for you. And talking about resources, how big are your social media teams? Yeah, um, globally we have about 30 people, but in the U.S. we have about uh, six. 
Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my core team, we have um, six that are focused on social. Awesome. So they're definitely close-knit teams. And mm -hmm. uh, for you guys, I think it's interesting. I like how you mentioned that you can really show people what's going on in their cities. So that is really great content for you guys because I know people are always following you know, accounts on Twitter that they always want to know what's going on. So is that something you really focus on in, in individual cities? And, and how do you sort of narrow it down and make sure you're you know, targeting the right locations with the right events and happenings? Yeah, we do. So what? Um, it's hard from a resource standpoint mm -hmm. because there's so much going on and it's actually, there's information from your zip code. It's like that's how local we get is we know exactly what's happening from like half a mile to from you. Um, so it's, there's so much content that we can potentially deliver to you. So what we try to do is um, focus on educating you about the overall massage mm -hmm. um, topic and things like that. And, and then we try to let you know about all the different massages in your area and things like that. So it's more of an education standpoint. So we have these things called guide articles that let you know about all the different topics and different kinds of deals that are out there. And then within that guide article can actually take you to let you find things that are more local to your area. Um, so we take this big education approach, whether it's through videos or these articles um, that introduce you to the different things that are happening um, potentially in your area, but it takes a more national approach um, from a scale, so that's scalable. Um, but then you can click into it and it's all um, through the power of technology. You can actually go <laughs> find ones that are uh, more local to you. Great. Awesome. We have about one minute left if anyone has any questions for Casey or Joey. Make sure. Yes, right here. We so, grab a mic for you one sec. Thanks, guys. Um, so going back to kind of what you were saying about executives, influencers, comedy writers, right? These are, People want to talk to other people. So what are you guys doing, if anything, on... I feel like one of the biggest untapped areas for social, at least for distribution, is employees. Especially more for Cisco a little bit, because you guys have so many employees. And probably for Groupon too, just because of the locality of it. So what are you guys doing to try to leverage and distribute content through the employee network? Yeah, I, go, do you want to start? Oh. Sure. Go so um, we do two things with our employees. One, our employees are featured in all of our videos. So we actually tap into all of the actors, the comedy writers, um, to be featured in all of the content that we produce. So if you check out the YouTube page, it's actually every single employee at Groupon. We never really hire outside employees or outside um, actors. They're all internal. Um, we're actually in the process of creating customer service videos as well for YouTube, and they will be actually customer service representatives showcasing um, the how-tos and customer service type um, content in those videos. Um, we're also in the process of potentially working with an employee advocacy tool as well because um, we have about 9,000 employees yeah. around the globe, which are a lot of <laughs> employees that we could potentially tap into to really um, work with their network. And we've done it already um, at a smaller scale for certain programs, but we really want to try to um, use a, m a more holistic approach, a larger tool to really help scale that a little bit larger, and that's something that we're working with right now. Um, so we also, so our team does a couple of different things. We do highlight on our own, just like our millennials, we have a millennial series, we have um, an innovation series that tells the story of our engineers, et cetera, um, done more of them like a news style, so it's not just like a talking head, like you're, you're actually seeing what they're working on. Um, but more recently, I talked about, you know, about our execs, and so we have a new CEO that started in July, and he's super focused on our culture. So what we've started to do is, you know, we have a block platform. We have, you know, other areas where people can share on their own, but really highlighting those shares, and so focusing on that culture story, regramming what they're sharing, take, you know, asking them to share during company meetings, including hashtags and in meetings, et cetera. So really encouraging them to share that culture story on social, and we've gotten a lot of traction from it. So, like, we even trended you know, like during his big party of, you know, it's, um, we called it Cisco Rocks, and it was like introducing Chuck as a CEO and um, trended not just in the U.S., but around the globe. So it was pretty awesome. I mean, we have 70,000 employees, so we have to take advantage of that. Yeah. <laughs> great. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time, but thank you guys so much. Uh, it was really great. So yeah. thanks. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Next